Hi, welcome back for Classical Coffee. Today we're in the New Bedford Public Library. Now you might not think of that as a place uh, for artwork uh, necessarily, but the New Bedford Library downtown on the third floor has a rather large collection of really fine art, particularly relevant to our area. Collection, uh, there are three Bierstadts here, there's works of Charles Henry uh, Gifford and Art Swain Gifford. Um, that really give a picture of life in New Bedford and on the South Coast from the, uh, from the 1800s. Uh, there's also a um, rather important collection of uh, the works of uh, Audubon. Uh, 430 paintings are here on deposit in the library and they're, they're available, they, they call them the naked Audubons because there's no glass or anything between them. Actually people can come in and, and see up to 10 of these at a time and really get up and close and personal. So it's, it's really a good opportunity. It's a wonderful location. We'll be showing you a few images. Uh, in fact, here behind me you'll see uh, some of the artwork that is on display on the third floor. Now, we're here to talk about uh, the second piece on the program um, for this Saturday, and that is the Matisse de Mahler, the Symphony from the Opera by Paul Hindemith. And uh, Matisse, the painter, uh, is based, the opera is based on the life story of Matisse Grunewald. Uh, who was a, a figure in the 1500s in Germany who um, was a very important painter of that period and also was a, a, a historical revolutionary. He, um, he actually left his painting to join the Peasants' War of the mid-1500s, uh, um, the revolt, and, um, and, and through a series of visions, dramatic visions, he was told uh, by God to go back and um, pick up his art again because that was his most important contribution was through his art. So um, that bears a parallel and there's a reason that Hinnemouth used this as a, as a theme because it bore a parallel to Hinnemouth's own life. This symphony was written in 1934 uh, and in 1933 Hitler had just come to power and uh, completely uh, uh, overwhelmed all the, all the, uh, the, the cultural life uh, of Germany. And um, Hindemith was branded a cultural Bolshevik by uh, Goebbels, and uh, his music was banned. Um, and, and so this, this opera was, was a very, very important piece of anti-Nazi, um, an anti-Nazi statement. Uh, what we're going to listen to out of this today is the first movement. Now, Hindemith used um, the music from the opera to create this symphony, and it's in three movements, and each of them is titled after three of the panels on what was Grunewald's greatest masterpiece, the Isenheim altarpiece, uh, in what is now Alsace. Um, he, um, he, he, the first one is the angelic concert, the, the concert of, of, of angels playing medieval instruments, and they're actually serenading the baby Jesus while Mary is giving him a bath. And, and we'll talk about the second and third, third movements. Um, but the performance you're going to hear is the Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra, which is a marvelous organization in Europe, and it's conducted by Herbert Blomstedt um, at the proms in 2010. And I love the concert because it starts with a, a, with a, a good introduction from the, the commentator and there's wonderful camera work that gets up and close and you can really watch the musicians play. Um, and it's a long, the, the excerpt is the entire piece, it's almost 30 minutes long, you don't have to listen to all that. I would encourage you just to focus in on the first movement, you can come back to that later if you want to hear more of it. I uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, we really look forward to seeing you at the concert on Saturday. 